What's up everybody, welcome to Podcast Now, I'm Alex. In this video, I want to talk about the future of the Star Wars movies, the next three Star Wars movies coming out after Episode 9. I want to talk about how D&D will ruin them. The showrunners, the co-creators, the notorious duo of D&D, the Game of Thrones, you know, of fame, um, why I do not believe that this is going to end well with Star Wars. And we've seen a lot of stuff already said about them. We've seen the petition pop up for Game of Thrones Season 8 to obviously make it remade. And we talked about that a bit in a video a little a while ago. Now we've gotten petitions that are actually again reaching semi-high numbers of people asking uh, Disney to remove them from the future of these Star Wars movies. And it's pretty easy to show us why people are thinking that. If you watch our channel, if you know the kind of Game of Thrones content we've produced, I mean we're really really big fans of Game of Thrones. We think that for the most part all of these seasons did a fantastic job, but season 8 truly truly dropped the ball and we've had so many problems with season 8. We did not like it. We did not, wear, we did not like where it went. We didn't like a lot of the choices that were made. Um, so there were just a lot of problems with season eight, and we're on that side of the fence for anybody you know interested on if we you know what where we stand on Game of Thrones season eight, we're on that side. And being on that side, I have to wonder about these Star Wars films. Now, again, it's not a question of do we hate Game of Thrones, do we hate Star Wars? That was never the thing with this petition for the Game of Thrones, you know, to have uh, season eight being remade. It was never a thing of do we hate it or we need it to be done. It's showing them a message that we are are not pleased. And when it comes to Star Wars, I'm a massive, massive Star Wars fan. I love those movies. I've been a Star Wars fan since I was a kid, and it's one of the, you know, most, it's the biggest franchise, I think, to me, as in terms of an individual, I'm um, growing up. Star Wars means so much, and I think it means a lot to everybody, to a lot of people. And, you know, having these two going to, uh, you know, helm the next three of them, I just can't help but think that this is not going to go well. I mean, in my honest prediction, I think Think this is what's going to happen. The first two Star Wars movies are going to be very, very good and set up whatever they're going to be setting up in a fantastic way, only to have the third movie come out and just be a colossal disappointment. I feel like in in all, the three the three Star Wars movies that they're going to make, we're going to look at as just the most disappointing Star Wars movies ever. And it could be because they make one or two of them very, very good, or maybe the best since the originals or whatever, however they do it. And then I just feel like they're going to drop the ball. There's nothing in in their resumes that have shown me that they can properly put together anything good from start to finish. Not that they can't put anything good in all. And I think in terms of this video, in terms of what I'm ranting on, in terms of what I'm talking about, the thing that I think makes this video different and I want to clarify and make known to you guys is I've seen a lot of videos just talk about how Star Wars is going to be destroyed and that they really should be removed and that there's no hope in all this and that all the movies are going to be garbage. I think where I stand on it is no, they've shown potential. I mean, Game of Thrones, let's not, season 8 doesn't diminish. I mean, maybe it does. It does take away a lot of the character growth and development and story and plot lines that they've been telling, but they're the ones who told it. I mean, yes, they used George R.R. R. Martin's uh, books, but then, you know, those ran out and they had to take liberties of their own. So you can argue how much was actually them, but they managed to create and put together a pretty good universe in Game of Thrones. Now, how much of that was actually them, you know, that's to be debatable, but they're the showrunners. They're the co-creators. They're the writers. They have such an integral part of the show. So the success of the show, I do feel like you have to give them credit um, leading up to Season 8. And Season 8, I mean, obviously got people to watch. The ratings were super, super high for Season 8. It's just a lot of people were disappointed how they put it all together. And beyond that, what they did, I mean, certain things of what happened in Season 8 were fine. The, the Night King dying was fine. You know, how it actually ending, the Daenerys going mad, John killing her, forming the council, all that stuff, those are okay. I I'm okay with those decisions. It's just how they got there. It's the rushness of it. It's it's how fast they just jumped to that. And I think if they just had another season or another six to ten more episodes on top of these six, I think they probably could have done it fine because all the main decisions were okay. I'm not mad with any of the major decisions. I'm not mad with the character deaths they chose to give us and not give us. All fine. All completely cool. How they did it, the fact that they rushed it, that's what I have a problem with. And, you know, even in their in their history, one of them was the writer of X Men Origins, Wolverine. So obviously that one, uh, you know, I really I think want to everybody wants to forget that that movie ever came out. That 2009 film, and now I should make note that his script was actually kind of re looked at and reworked, but he is credited as one of the two writers. So you know maybe the actual script that came out for that movie wasn't all entirely his, but I mean the entire film was just a pure garbage and pure joke. So if any 
of it came from him. I don't like that. Really, their rise to fame, they've done a couple other things, both of them, in the past, and even in the future, they're working on stuff, but you have to really, I mean, I, I look at that, Wolverine Origins, I look at that, and I look at Game of Thrones, those are the two biggest things that you can honestly look at. They, they got all of their fame and how good they are, and the fact that they got Star Wars, it's because of Game of Thrones. It's not because of anything else, it's because of Game of Thrones. So, you have to just look at Game of Thrones and say, well, what kind of themes, what are they going to do with these Star Wars movies? And I think that they have it in them to make very, very good Star Wars movies, but what they also don't have in them is, I think, an ability to have closure, an ability to actually finish what they start. I feel like the biggest problem with Season 8 is it kind of buckled under its own weight, that they built it up, and they forgot so many things, and they let so many people down, they let the characters in the show down, I mean, so many things wrong, and you maybe it's because of the rush, maybe it's because they didn't have enough episodes, but they were offered episodes. So it ultimately comes down to bad decision making, which do you want that for a Star Wars film? I think when they first announced that when they were going to make the next, you know, a, a trilogy, or I think they actually was only announced they're going to make two, but now it's three. I was very, very excited. I mean, I want to see that. There's rumors that it's going to be like Knights of the Old Republic era. All very, very cool, but I can't help but, you know, think, and I'm going to keep my expectations super, super low for those Star Wars films. Because if you keep it low, then maybe you won't be disappointed. But I do feel like the first one to two of those movies are going to be very, very good. Same thing with Game of Thrones. A lot of building, a lot of, you know, getting ready for what's to come. And I just feel like they're going to really, really drop the ball on the third Star Wars film, much like they did in Game of Thrones. I don't think, they're, I don't think their history has pointed to them having a problem with building and getting things ready for that epic conclusion. They've done a fantastic job with that. They've made us care about characters. They've set up interesting plots. I mean, look at all the theories that people thought could happen happen for season eight. All amazing. All things that if they just would have even w looked at one of them and picked the best fan theory that they thought and said, let's just do that. I think it would have been better than what they did. Or go with what they chose. That was fine too, but do it better. I mean, they, they had one of two options and they, they didn't choose either of them. They chose a third option, which was make it rushed, make our own ending, which was okay, but do it in just the worst way possible. And I don't want that for Star Wars. I want Star Wars to be okay. Ryan Johnson has already messed up Star Wars enough, so please leave it alone. Only let J.J. and George Lucas. Those are the only two people I really think uh, should touch that movie. And Kathleen Kennedy, she's the one who signed these people up. She's going to be held responsible if their movies fail as well. So all very, very interesting, but I do not have hope for these Star Wars movies. I'm going to keep my expectations very low, so I won't be disappointed when ultimately they build up it. And, you know, if the first two movies are amazing, I will still keep my expectations at rock bottom because I just don't trust them anymore. I I think a lot of people have lost a lot of faith. You know, they're getting referred to now as dumb and dumber and a lot of things being thrown at them. It's some not nice things for sure, but did they earn it? I mean, that's up for you to decide, um, but definitely the faith in them has been shaken. You know, I don't think people are as excited. And obviously, I mean, there's petitions to get them removed from Star Wars. People are warning other people like, hey, you thought Game of Thrones was the only thing they'll ruin? Wait till they get to Star Wars. So there's a lot of that going around the internet and it's it's okay to be wary. It's okay to be, you know, acknowledging these kind of things because this is honestly what's coming up next and you know I'm interested to see what they're going to do I can't wait to see the trailers I, I, I want I'm going to see the movies I mean I, I'm always going to watch the Star Wars movies that come out um, but I'm just not going to expect much at all and if you guys want to go back and watch any of the past seasons, any of the past episodes of the Game of Thrones, we have a link in the description below. It's a Fandango Now affiliate link. If you click that, if you buy or rent something through that, it helps us out um, on the channel. But you can go back and you can watch any of the old Game of Thrones episodes. They're all there for you. You can rent, buy them. You can link your Fandango points if you get the VIP points when you go see a movie. If you guys saw Avengers Endgame, you can earn points there. And you can use them. You can redeem them on Fandango Now when you rent or buy movies or TV shows. So it's a nice little thing you can do with linking them. If you guys are interested in that, definitely check out, like I said, that code in the description box below. So let me know in the comments below, guys, what do you think about this? Do you think D&D &D are going to ruin the next three Star Wars movies, the Star Wars movies that they're penned to write and, you know, completely kind of realize and have their own vision for? Do you think they're going to be able to do it or not? Let me know. Make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel podcast now and hit that bell icon. And we've been covering a lot of Game of Thrones stuff on the channel. We're going to be continuing it with one more video. Video, uh, later this week. And we're also going to be covering Game of Thrones even past this. We're going to be covering the prequel when it's out. So, you know, if you guys have been following us for our Game of Thrones content, we definitely don't want you to 
leave. We want you to stick around and stay with us, and we're going to have lots of stuff um, in the future over the next several years talking about Game of Thrones. So we're really excited for that. So I hope you guys stay around with us. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.